Okay, so welcome back to another edition of our joint podcast um, all around the COVID crisis and how we're coping. This is a joint podcast between myself and Dr. Caroline Walker. Caroline, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi, Rachel. It's, it's great to be back with you. Um, my name is Dr. Caroline Walker. Uh, I'm an NHS-based psychiatrist and therapist, and I specialise in the well-being of doctors. I founded an organisation called The Joyful Doctor, which is all about supporting the well-being of doctors, um, and I uh, run The Joyful Doctor podcast. Great. And I'm Dr. Rachel Morris. I'm a GP turned executive coach. I specialise in resilience and productivity in the workplace for professionals in high stress jobs. Um, and I run a training course called the Shapes Toolkit. And I'm also host of the You Are Not a Frog podcast. So it's good to be back today. It's been a, I think a couple of weeks since we recorded the last one. And uh, I think yeah. things are constantly sort of changing through the, the COVID crisis. And we've been you know, talking with teams and managers and doctors and, and, and individuals and have sort of noticed the way things are, are shifting a little bit. Mm. Caroline, what have you noticed going on with, with people? Yeah, absolutely. I've noticed that with the last sort of couple of weeks, particularly, we've been really shifting into a slightly uh, more exhausted phase. It's like we had that first sort of um, rush of those first few weeks where everyone was pulling together. There was lots of energy. We all got the same goal in mind. Um, really um, almost quite exciting um, but also quite scary and now it feels like that, that initial kind of phase is sort of starting to wear off a bit and we're kind of shifting towards this this new phase it's sort of almost like a recovery phase that um, it starts with a period of feeling just a bit flat and a bit exhausted and a bit like oh my goodness this is this is going on quite a long time now and there's no end in sight so I really feel like we're at that that point at the moment and we're, we're there's a name I think we're talking about it within um, healthcare as COVID fatigue it's like we've kind of a bit fed up we've had enough uh, we've just not got that energy that we had just a few weeks ago so, yeah. yeah yeah and so you know, we were just talking earlier that we, we think there are a few factors contributing to this and you've already out, outlined some. And I think it's it's very different for lots of different people because I think we're all doing such different things, aren't we? Some yeah. of us, you know, absolutely, yeah. you know, working as hard as we possibly can on the front line, yeah. uh, you know, seeing patients all, all the time. Some of us are on the front line, but, but our work is really quite quiet mm -hmm. because no one's coming in. Mm -hmm. Some of us are us now seeing our uh, work starting to creep up and I think especially GPs they might not be seeing patients face to face so much but actually the phones are going are going yeah. crazy um, and they you know had having just so many phone calls now from people worried about other medical conditions and things like that and then we've got yeah. people at home who are having to isolate who also are working incredibly hard and having to cope with the kids as well and then there are some people who have been furloughed and 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 actually maybe don't have as as, as much to do so you know, it's difficult, isn't it, when, when you're trying to interact with friends and colleagues who are at a very different stage and doing very yeah. different things. Yeah, absolutely. And all of those different places are, are quite, uh, you know, people are having the normal reactions that they would have in those different times so so those that are still in it and still feeling quite stressed and maybe a bit overwhelmed those who are um sitting uh, somewhere perhaps with less to do feeling quite guilty or quite anxious about what's to come those where it's starting to creep up thinking oh my goodness you know how hard is this going to get and how are we going to cope how are we going to readjust to this new normal that everyone keeps talking about and i think you're right that we're everyone's at different points at different stages right now and, and that can be quite challenging when you're you're perhaps feeling one way and that that friend you're talking to or that colleague you're talking to is, is feeling another way um, but everything that we're feeling is still quite normal I think at this stage um, for all those different bits of the process we were we were talking earlier weren't we about the um the different phases when something like this happens mm -hmm. you know there's an initial phase then there's a sort of recovery phase and then there's a um a sort of rebuilding phase mm -hmm. and I know you've been speaking with people this week about that and how yeah, yeah, I was having a really interesting chat with, with someone who works for charities and this sort of quite well recognised crisis um, sort of re response thing where, you know, if something happens like an earthquake, a big disaster, you've got your, your initial response, high adrenaline, you're, you're going at it, you're, you know, you're, you're rescuing people, you're sorting things out and, you know, everything's go, go, go. And then after that, you've got the, the recovery phase mm. where, you know, the, the disaster is over 
then you get to recover. Now, obviously, this is like you have this one-off thing going on, but I guess there are other disasters that are that are ongoing, aren't yeah, there? Ab- I guess with the COVID, it is a bit ongoing. Absolutely. So it's not like an earthquake or a, a terrorist attack or something like that, where it happens at point, you know, on day one, and then you you follow this pattern actually what we're having is lots of little repeating traumas and little almost like aftershocks um, and we may have more traumas to come and that's a really tricky place so so what I'm seeing interestingly this week is I've spoken to a few doctors who are almost starting to feel that stress and anxiety again that they felt in the first week or two because for them it's like oh we're, we're about to face this challenge again. So say GPs where, where patients are coming back in and they're a little bit busier and there's now starting to think, oh, how are we going to manage these patients who've got chronic symptoms or how are we going to you know, get the care to people who need it in, in the w- new ways that we're working at the moment? And, and it, there's almost, and for a lot with testing happening more as well, I think there's, that's leaving a lot of people in surprising situations. So people finding out that they're asymptomatically positive or finding out that they're negative when they really thought they would be positive. And, and so people are kind of, it, it's a really strange time right now where we've kind of got one foot in that crisis phase still. Mm. And, and one foot in this recovery phase where it's like, this is changing and shifting. And we're kind of starting to work out our, how we're going to be living and, you know, adjusting, mm. but it's still so happening. It's still unfolding. And, and so we're getting a real mix of emotions at the moment, I think. Um, yeah. I guess the, the third phase of that is then the rebuilding phase where we start to re- rebuild things. And, and mm. I guess what I've observed is that we're, you know, doctors and professionals in high stress jobs are very quick to get into action on things. Yeah. And I think there's a risk that we go straight from the response phase into the re- rebuilding phase without stopping to, to recover yeah. and to look after yeah. ourselves and think actually, what is it that we need it just as individuals, but also as teams and as a system as a whole to, to recover. Yeah absolutely spot on Rachel like we we often rush that part and I see that in doctors all the time with their mental health generally and with the physical health actually we've all done it haven't we we've got a flu and then the moment we can get out of bed or have a meal we're like right when are we going back to work you know we're we're right back on it and we we've really struggled to go oh actually when you've had a proper flu sometimes it takes a month or six weeks to kind of really feel better and with covid i think it's going to be several months for us to recover from from what's just happened in the last couple of months and there may be other peaks and stresses along the way which will kind of push that back as well so you're absolutely right we need to be giving ourselves enough time and enough support and enough space right now to just kind of feel and, and talk and share and, and, and process what's just happened and what is happening to us as human beings because it's big stuff. Mm. It sort of reminds me a bit like the, you know, the Kubler-Ross grief cycle where, you know, you start with this yeah. and then you go into this and then you go into this and then you go into this. But actually, we know that, that it doesn't happen in a linear way. You no. start with that, you go to that, and then you might circle back again and go yeah. through it all again. And I guess that's what's going to happen, isn't it, with this? Absolutely, absolutely. And it's going to go on for months. So we might get days or weeks where we're feeling a bit better, but then we'll get a day where suddenly we're really angry again or suddenly we're really tearful and upset again. We might get stretches of periods are like a couple of weeks or longer where we're feeling a bit flat and a bit down and it can feel like you're quite depressed um you know and I'm seeing a lot of people who are thinking oh am I is this wrong am I am I somehow am I depressed or have I got PTSD or have I got this or that and I think at the moment we're still in that phase where it's kind of most things are kind of probably quite normal and it's just our normal human response to trauma and grief and adjusting when such big things happen um so you know if you're still getting kind of fuzzy headedness you can't remember what day it is you know a lot of us are still getting that where all the days are merging into one um that's quite normal still at this phase you know i think we need to just give ourselves time and and as you say as doctors we're very proactive we want to kind of get back to normal get things going get things you know be busy be productive be but it, if we rush that then we're not going to allow that space to to heal and recover. We're going to run into much bigger problems down the line. Yeah. And that's really helpful for me, just thinking that actually 
this is normal. I was feeling really, yeah. really low last week on a couple of days. I think probably because yeah. the weather was awful as well. Yeah. Help, yeah. I'm a very fickle soul, can be changed by the weather. But, um, and I was on a, a, a FaceTime call with my, with my family and I, I was, I just wasn't my normal perky self. And, you know, mm. my mum, bless her, was going, Wait, Rachel, what's, you know, are you okay? Are you okay? And I was thinking, oh, am I not okay? Maybe I am depressed and all this. And yeah. actually, I was just feeling yeah. miserable yeah. about what was, what was going on and what was happening with, you know, work yeah. and, and the kids can't get out and see their friends. So actually, yeah. yeah it's really I had it, um, absolutely, I had it about 10 days, two weeks ago, and I just had a day where I just had to sit on the sofa all day and just be like, oh my goodness, you know, yeah. what's going on? And, you know, and I have had mental health problems and still do sometimes and I have had bipolar disorders you know and so for me it felt very similar to when I was depressed but the I suppose the difference was that there was a slight kind of there is a more changeableness to it mm-hmm. so it's not like every single day I'm completely flat it's more that there's these moments or like this morning I was watching something on tv and um, the news and there was this lovely story a really uplifting story about a lady who's come out of hospital after having covid and a tracheostomy and she's reunited with her family including her young children and mm-hmm. it just really hit me and I started crying you know and that and I wouldn't normally and then pre-covid I wouldn't normally cry at those sorts of stories I might but um but at the moment there's just that our emotions are just that little bit closer to the surface mm. it can feel really disorientating and we kind of expect it to be better already you know it's okay it should be better but, but no actually it takes time it takes yeah. months not weeks so how do we know if if we are depressed and we get we're it, we've got a more significant mental health problem that maybe we need to seek professional help for yeah. or if it's just covid fatigue and fed upness Mm, it's a really great question um and it's not easy always to tell and it's certainly not easy to tell for ourselves so i think i mean i'm relatively experienced at knowing my own illness and pattern now so i can Mm. just about judge it for myself but i still run it by professionals as well so and what i would say is if you're getting say more persistent symptoms so you're feeling really flat and fed up and no energy and no motivation and you're struggling with your day-to-day life so you're struggling to get out of bed you're struggling to eat as you normally would you're struggling to go to work you're struggling to do and it's impacting day to day but for several days up to like say a couple of weeks in a row then I think we need to be starting to talk to a professional seeking help to say you know your GP or to one of the helplines that's out there to say is this normal is this not for until that point when you're just having the odd day or the odd few days what i'd say is just check it out with your mates and your friends and your colleagues and just just ask each other how you're doing like your mum did with you you know just that bouncing back and forward like i might say to you rachel oh, i've had a bad day today or you know today's a better day it kind of helps you just to get a gauge of what's everyone else going through is this is this normal is this not you know have they noticed something and but what i suppose if what we're looking for is um for those struggling that little bit more is that it's lasting longer yeah. and it's really impacting on what you're able to do day to day. Yeah. And there is help out there. If that's you, there is absolutely the mental health services are out there. The helplines are out there. It's all running as it, as it would normally be there for you. So please do reach out if you're struggling. Mm. So just want to bring us back to this COVID fatigue, because I think there are several areas that we can get the COVID fatigue in. And yeah. I think you know, one of them is just physical fatigue, just physically feeling knackered because maybe we're not yeah. sleeping as well. Several things, I guess, contribute to that. What you know, anxiety and stress, and maybe waking up worrying. Yeah. I found myself awake in the middle of the night, just going over stuff the other night. Yeah. Um, but also, maybe we're not as physically active during the day. You know, I'm normally cycling around Cambridge and yeah. not doing that. I'm, I'm trying to get to stuff, but nowhere near as much as I used to. So I guess it's that sort of fatigue. Um, I, I've, I've read a bit about Zoom fatigue as well. Yeah, yeah, Oh yeah. my goodness. So that, that's, yeah. a, that's a thing, isn't it? You know, why, why is it that Zoom is, and these sort of virtual I don't. I mean, I don't think it's just Zoom, is it? I mean, it's handy no, to call it Zoom fatigue. Other, other any, platforms yeah, exist. Yeah. Virtual working, I think, and that kind of constantly being on your screen, constantly watching yourself and others and interacting in a human way, but, but with a screen between you. Um, is exhausting and it was really interesting this week um, myself and Claire Gerard the medical director at 
um, NHS practitioner health put out a blog on the BMJ about uh, COVID fatigue and a big chunk of it was about actually this isn't just affecting those that are in hospitals or the front line where they're working directly with COVID patients this is really affecting those that are working from home and those that are working from work but are quieter at the moment so the fatigue's affecting us all in different ways and you're absolutely right those of us working from home we've lost those boundaries between work and home life that's blurring more so we're, we're tending to be working a lot longer than we would um, and when we're working we're often distracted by you know the noises or worrying about being interrupted or things like that um, and yeah just the way of working the, the having the back-to-back -back meetings online constantly watching yourself on screen you know as you're talking is is really exhausting mentally and physically mm. and, and it was a question we, we did a webinar yesterday and somebody asked didn't they you know is it a physical exhaustion as well and 100 percent, it's this is mental and physical it's both because our bodies and our minds are just working in very different ways right now yeah there are some, some sort of top tips i read in an article about about the, the zoom fatigue or virtual yeah, competency yeah. um really good tip is first of all turn off your own you turn off your self view because then you're not distracted by having to look at yourself thinking you know it's my, my hair yeah. okay so what do I yeah. look like you know just because yeah. you don't normally see yourself when you're talking to someone it's just a bit weird so you, yeah. you can turn that off in many of the platforms yeah. and the second one is if possible just have a phone call and I must say yesterday I had a couple yeah. of calls and I actually walked while I was speaking which is lovely yeah. and and that yeah. It's, yep. it's not as tiring actually yeah and i would say as well in between meetings if you can having little gaps so i've been trying to if i've got an hour long meeting i've been trying to make it 50 minutes or 55 and then taking five minutes and not using those five minutes to just oh, i'll just check that email or, or i'll just set up that other um meeting or i'll just do this but actually st standing up moving going elsewhere getting outside changing your physical energy state so important yeah yeah so there's the, that's the virtual working um, fatigue. But you, you also mentioned the, the blurred lines between work and home. And certainly I've had lots of people commenting on that. So I think before, before COVID came along, there was a really good TED talk that I, I watched. I think I've mentioned it on the podcast before, but they talk about, and I, I'll put the link in the show notes, talks about the, the third space between work and home and noticing yeah. that when he was coming home, he hadn't really got rid of the day's work and he'd just go straight into his kids and they were always i think he, he realized that his kids were almost more frightened of him when he got home from work and then he was a completely different person on a, a saturday and sunday yeah. and he starts to talk about how you build this sort of almost like a decompression zone between your work day and your and your home life now many people yeah. have that when they're commuting yeah we, we've lost that when we're working those of us who are working from home and so there are things that you can do to, to build that in maybe you know going out for a walk or going and getting changed into some actual different clothes or doing a 10 minute meditation or something that's going to just demark this is work this is him i just need that space in between and then and then what you do in that space in between mm -hmm. is to take time to I just sort of rest a bit and then to yeah. sort of recover and reflect on what you've just done during the day and then almost doing a ritual that helps you reset, reset your thinking into, right, I'm now, oh, I've left that behind. I'm now into home mode. And, and certainly mm. when I'm, when I'm not done that, I've, I've been, you know, trying to cook tea whilst talking to a child, whilst thinking about the thing I've just done at, at work and I'm yeah. really distracted and it just doesn't feel good. Have you found yourself doing that? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Like everybody, right? We, we, if we're not really mindful about these things from the very beginning, then we very quickly get into habits uh, that are not so healthy. So uh, a lot of people have been thinking, actually, it's really nice not to have to commute. I've got this extra time in my day, but we're just automatically using that to blur and, and Work. keep working basically for most of us yeah um i really recommend um and i use a kind of technique at the end of the day particularly where i sort of just mentally scan through what i've done that day in of work and, and just kind of go okay so i had this meeting and then i did this podcast and then i did that and then i spoke to that person and and you just kind of scan through it's almost like you're filing away your day in your brain naturally and then if anything pops up from it like oh i forgot to do that you just make a little note for tomorrow to do it tomorrow and you keep going through your day until you get to the end and it's it's what our brain naturally does on a commute actually without us realizing but but if we can actually just deliberately do that it only takes a few minutes um and note down anything that you do tomorrow then you can leave that 
at work, even if work is at home, you can leave it mentally at work. And then you walk through that door. It's like, ah, okay, now I'm at home. Yeah. And it can really help to delineate that. And, and if you need, some people need, as you say, that a slightly bigger third space. So a time to maybe you do go for a brief walk or you do five minutes on a mindfulness app or you do, uh, you know, do a little dance to your favorite song. It doesn't, it really doesn't matter what you're doing, but something just to, just to break up, differentiate between the two. Yeah. Otherwise we just carry one into the other and back again. Yeah. And that is exhausting. Yes. There's a really good book by Michael Hayek called Free to Focus, which I'm, I'm looking at a lot at the moment. And mm. they do recommend that at the end of each day, you set three priorities for the next day. So mm. yes, as well as looking back, you think actually, what am I doing tomorrow? Mm. You get those down. And then actually tomorrow, it's much easier to get, get started on your on your work those of you know those of you yeah. that aren't just plowing straight into a yeah. surgery or something like that but but even yeah. then there are there's always other stuff that you've got to do so sort of knowing that in advance yeah takes and it away from room and it's it's the ruminating that we do isn't it yeah, but then yeah. Gonna... because if we don't file that away it stays in our brain and it, like you said you're you're cooking or you're trying to relax in the evening and actually it's just you're still switched on and it's still mm-hmm. whizzing around or you wake up in the middle of the night and if yes. that's happening to you then do get it out of your brain is my biggest tip mm-hmm. so write it down have a pad and pen by your bed um preferably not a screen but if if not you know if you've got your phone by your bed then do just type it into the notes you know don't go into your social media and stuff but just um just just getting it out of your head so it's not whizzing around and going okay I'm going to look at that in the morning yeah yeah it's it's interesting though it's like you said we we do that rumination naturally on our commute and naturally when we're walking around so sometimes it may be that you actually do need to go for a walk rather than just sitting at your your desk to do that so we talk a I talk a lot about switching your brain between focus mode and diffuse mode and actually it's the diffuse mode where you start thinking oh yeah there's that thing and that thing so yeah but sometimes actually getting yourself some physically somewhere different to do that reflecting and and planning or be it on a walk or you've got a cup of tea you're going to sit in an armchair actually I sometimes take myself off to that corner of my my, that's my sort of planning chair where I sort of sit and I think mm. actually what do I need what's the priorities here and, and you know, yeah. that's quite helpful for me to be physically in a different space yeah so even if you can't if you've got a tiny space if you're one of those people I heard from a mum the other days three kids downstairs she's working eight to late in her mm. bedroom doing like phone oh. calls all day with patients even if you haven't got the space you can just be really creative literally just turn your chair around like literally where you are you could just literally you know shift to face a different wall because we yeah. know that if we change our perspective change what we're looking at change what we're it it shifts our brain into a different way of thinking mm-hmm. be like the old um, the movie with um robin williams that's the, the one where he stands on the table the dead poet society and you know he gets all this these gets his students to stand up on the teacher's desk and look at the world from a different perspective mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. It's really really powerful so even you don't need lots of space to do it. you don't need a garden you don't need yeah. you can just do something yeah. yeah so i'm sort of busy writing down these different different areas of zoom fatigue mm. one one fatigue thing and i i'm uh, not sure yes no we will talk about this is people fatigue stroke family fatigue stroke relationship fatigue totally because, really i important. mean really i love important. my guys you know and i'm so yeah. grateful for them but you know what yeah. we could just do with being apart for a bit i think yeah yeah I say yeah. That. And yeah absolutely i'm so glad you said it it's happening to all of us we're all mm. struggling with our relationships right now because they're all shifting and changing and I, I think what's happened is in the first few weeks like i said before we're all kind of focused in on a shared goal we're doing what we have to do to make things work now the the it's getting a bit like it's wearing a bit thin and we're all getting a little bit on top of each other a bit more a bit more irritable again and a bit more um, and I I'm really recommending to people that they relook at their um their schedules and how they're managing their week because what I think a lot of families and lots of um, people living together have done is kind of fallen into new patterns that they've had to to cope but but some of those patterns aren't working for them so it might be that you've divvied up the childcare or the um, when you're going to do the homeschooling or who's working when and who's doing this and who's that. And, and that's what you had to do to start with. But I would look at that again and go, OK, is that working for us or do we need to change the days around or the times around a little bit? Or do I need a little bit more time where it's just me? 
you know we really need to start feeding that time back in because that's the time that went completely the first thing to go right we're so focused on our patients and our families and our colleagues um the first thing to go is is the time for us so if we can start to just feed that back in and, and a little bit of fun dare i say it as well i think now you know we're all still finding this quite challenging and quite tough and it is a serious situation but it is okay to start to build in a bit more of the, the joy into life again and to think, you know, what, what might I enjoy? I just bought myself my first ever Lego set. So it's just for me, um, you know, because I was that playing with my son's one and I was like, actually, I really, really quite like this. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think it doesn't matter what it is, but I think just, just starting to mindfully look at that, how we're spending our time with each other and can we actually just check change that slightly so it works better for for all of us yeah i was looking i was listening to a really good podcast um about relationships in in covid and um the guy was saying there's some really interesting statistics about relationships and you know what what happens and in in disasters and you know tough times and you know yes there is a lot of you know trauma and a lot of people actually do end up splitting up afterwards but actually there's a lot of relationships become stronger and yeah. um it's interesting he was saying you know the problem we we forget to do the stuff that we would normally do so you know if if we weren't in covid me and my husband would make sure we tried to talk to each other more and, and have a date night every well we try and do it every week that never yeah. happens yeah. Every, every every couple of weeks but we haven't had a date night for what we are week week seven now yeah the kids are always around and we're always it's lovely yeah. we're always eating dinner together yeah that's really helpful and I know. think yeah a lot of people but now's the time to start thinking about that yeah. and feeding it back in again and similar my partner and I have a date night and we did keep most of ours going actually but but they changed they were very different like we, we for most of them we just sat there like zombies you know <laughs> like oh my goodness what's going on it's too much you know um but now is the time I think to start gently giving ourselves permission to just start reintroducing those sort of or normal things that keep us well and happy in the longer term because you know as human beings we're not designed to be under constant strain and stress all the time we, we need a bit of both you know we need to be challenged and, and to face up to reality and problems but we also need downtime and connection and, and joy and yeah all those lovely things so and I think it's about not expecting it to be the same to start with so doing it but not you know just being a bit gentle with it like okay maybe we won't be our most sparkling amazing you know date night ever but it just will do it and then and then it will gradually come back to yeah 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 are there any other areas of so we've talked a little bit about the physical fatigue you know with the not sleeping and also the sort of maybe lack of exercise we talked about the virtual fatigue of you know that the, the effort that it takes to do to do relationships virtually you know it's not just that you're always looking at yourself but it's it's, di it's more difficult to read body language in 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 two yes years, as it were yeah totally um we talked about sort of the blurred home life fatigue the work life blurring line fatigue of the difficulty that we're leeching into stuff and then there's people fatigue as well yeah there any other areas you're seeing that that we are becoming a bit fatigued in i mean i I'm not sure there's any area of life that hasn't been touched by this. Actually, the more we go through it, the more I look around and think, oh, um, I mean, there's certain things, aren't there, that have just carried on without us. Like the spring is happening here in the UK yeah. and we're seeing the beautiful bluebells have come up and, you know, and the sun is shining on some days and that's lovely. And so there are, there are bits about life in the universe that have carried on as normal without as if nothing's going on. But most areas, and I think it's really important you touched on that, those more subtle things that we perhaps don't think about like the way that we interact with one another. so even if you go out to the shops like I drove to the supermarket the other day for our food shop it just everything felt different you know the roads looked different because there were less cars the people were walking in different ways and and as I went into the shop there were these new lines on the floor and yeah. and, and people are just sort of keeping just or not to avoid you, aren't they? yeah some are wearing masks some are it's just like there's all these little subtle changes and like different things in the shops and in and on and the news you know just our, te our television has changed you know it's something we may a lot of us do interact with on a daily basis mm. um our work has changed our relationships have changed our, ch our child rearing everything it's like there's very few areas where it hasn't but I, what i do want to come back to is that 
you know, as human beings, we're incredibly adaptable to change. Mm. That's what we do. If you think about it as a baby, you come out of your mom's, you know, tummy and you're actually like, everything changes from that point forward. You have to learn how to feed yourself and learn how to walk and learn how to talk and how to make friends and how to work and how to study and have fun. And, you know, we're, as human beings, we're generally very adaptable to change. So initially it can feel a real shock. It can feel really unsettling. It can feel all over the place um, and bring up a lot of difficult emotions, but actually most of us do adapt pretty quickly. And I think we're starting to see that now in this hybrid place where we're kind of one foot in the crisis and one foot into the next phase. It's like we're, we're adapt we're changing we're adapting with it and we're starting to feel a little bit more like oh okay this is where the new boundaries are this is where this is how i ad- approach this so you know it is hard but we will get through this and we are getting through this and we're going to get through whatever there is to come as well and together you know uh, yeah. so caroline i'm gonna um ask you for your your three top tips for people to avoid COVID fatigue. So while you think of those, I'll just share yeah. mine. I've just jotted a few down. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> my, my top tips for people would be, um, firstly, make sure you, you find that, that decompression zone, that third space between work and home. Um, make it something different, make it something um, intentional, make it a routine. So that's the first thing. I think secondly, think about how each relationship you have with the people you're, you're with or the people you, 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 if you're not isolating with anybody, the people you regularly see on Zoom and think about actually, how can we make this a little bit more fun? <laughs> or, you know, how can I spend a little bit more particular time with you? Um, and then I think my third tip would be, don't, don't forget that recovery time in the middle of the response and the rebuilding. Don't jump straight into, into rebuilding mm. and, and action. Actually make sure you just sit with yourself and, Think about actually what, what you need right now and don't be afraid to, to take it easy and give yourself a bit of a break. Those yeah. are my three. Caroline, what do you have? Really great tips. Um, I think we're not, we're not going to avoid COVID fatigue. I think we're all going to feel it. We're either, we're either feeling it now or we're going to feel it going forward. I think it's natural and normal um, when something like this happens. I think for me, this phase is about uh, pacing and taking a break. So even if you've got work to do, even if you've got that long to-do list of things to do at home, allowing yourself to take time out from that and getting used to having time off again. I think that's, you know, we need to get reacquainted with taking time off and taking breaks. And, and that includes taking some leave. I think it's really, really important, you know, because this is for the long haul. It's going to go on for months and years. We don't, we need to be taking regular time out and leave. Um, I think... The other thing I would recommend is perhaps building in some sort of um, review process for your day. So something at the end of your particular working day where you just take a few moments as a, the NHS practitioner health and, and I developed a little uh, poster recently that's a three minute ritual. You take three deep breaths and you ask yourself three questions. What was hard? What went well? And what do I need right now? Mm. So just something simple like that yeah. can just really help just to contain and process what you're going through day to day um, as we go through this phase. It's being gentle with ourselves and, and just thinking, yeah, what do we need right now? And whatever that is, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank you. That's really helpful. Good. So, you know, for all our listeners, we hope that, you know, you're doing okay and just recognise that COVID fatigue is normal and we're all experiencing it. But just, just keep your, an eye on yourself, an eye on your colleagues, an eye on your friends and, and family and get help if you need it. Mm. So, you know, make sure we, they're all the links are going to be in, in yeah. the bottom of the show notes there. Yeah. So Caroline, thank you once again for, for in the podcast with me. Uh, we'll be back. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll be back talking about whatever we think is is, is the new the new thing in in a couple of weeks' time. Because yeah. like we said, things are changing all the time. Um, as ever, if you want to contact us, please get in touch with us. We'll we'll leave our email addresses. You can get in touch with us via email, via Twitter. We're on yeah. LinkedIn. Um, share your thoughts, and if if there's anything you would like us to cover in any of these 
podcast, please let us know. Do submit your questions and maybe we could do a QA and a um, one quite soon coming up. Now, and that yeah, I think it'd be lovely. Let's do a webinar or something where we can get some interaction and some yeah. answer people's questions. Yeah, let's yeah. do that. So watch this space, but please contact us and please share this with, with people you think it might be useful for. So thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Soon. Bye. Bye.